What's up guys, Kizzlekicks here bringing you another episode of this Palace FIFA 16 career mode. Now before we jump into this one, let's have a quick recap about what happened in the previous episode. We went out of the Capital One Cup, of course, at the earliest possible stage after a really, really disappointing performance away to Notts County. And we have to hold our hands up and say we didn't deserve anything from that game. But in the very next game, the game after at Stamford Bridge, we picked up a massive three points with a 2-1 victory against Chelsea behind at half-time, but we pulled it back in the second half. Debut goal from Daly Sincraven, um, sealing the win for us with a, a goal from Dwight Gale as well. But um, as you can see, important time of the season then, it is transfer deadline day. So last chance for us to, uh, to do some business and get some players on the books and improve the squad. Now you can see um, from some of the players that we're looking at, predominantly we're looking to bring in a striker. Because of course, as you know, we have struggled for goals so far this season. Even though we're having a very good year, we've got a very good defensive record. Um, we would just like to add a few more goals. Um, we brought in Sinkraven, hoping his creativity will help us do that. And I believe a pro prolific striker would help us on the goal front as well. You can see Jamie Vardy, Mame Buram Juve, Berahino, Troy Deeney, all players that we're looking to bring in. And we don't have a massive budget, not a lot of money to spend in the wage budget. The wage budget is fairly sizable actually, but we don't want to eat into that unless we absolutely have to. So players such as Fraser Campbell will be used in the deals hopefully going in the other direction so it's literally just the uh, the transfer fee that we have to pay but West Brom come back asking for 9 million for Berahino we chucked in a bit of 8 plus Campbell Troy Deeney we're going to offer 5 plus Campbell they asked for 6 um, but the next one as you can see Leicester City getting back to us regarding Jamie Vardy they asked for just 1.3 million I was willing to pay not a lot more than that but definitely more than 1.3 million to get him at the club 28 years old England capped of course so when they asked for that, we made the made the offer straight away. We tried to, to loan Loic Remy from Chelsea, but they decided that he's not available. And um, Stoke asked for too much money, really, for Mame Buram Juve. Although we are going to try and get him at a cut price deal, um, eight million. And we took Fraser Campbell out of the deal, just offering eight. We don't want to pay much more than that, um, but hopefully we can at least get one of these boys in. So let's progress through a little bit further. The offer for Jamie Vardy, 1.3 million was accepted. He is interested in joining the club and he asked for just 25,000 pound a week. So in terms of value for money, Jamie Vardy would be a fantastic, really, really fantastic signing. He's probably not the best striker that we're, that we're looking at at the moment, but um, certainly one that's really, really tempting. Um, the other guy, Seydou Berahino, probably the better of the two. He's just 22 years old as well. Um, I think he's 77 rated overall. He's got plenty of uh, plenty of pace. He's a decent finisher as well. He has asked for £45,000 a week. We're going to offer 42 and a half with a hefty goal bonus um, and important first team player status as well. But don't forget, Fraser Campbell would be going in the other direction. So the difference in the, the wages would be covered. But let's progress even further, see what happens. Um, both of them, as you can see, have accepted the contract offer. Now, we sort of um denied a little bit with the decision about whether to bring in both um, or whether to just bring in one. As you can see, we have accepted the offer. Jamie Vardy is definitely here. Um, and we feel that this deal for Berahino is probably too good to refuse. We've, we, we feel he's got a lot of potential um, with the training that's been added to the FIFA 16 career mode as well. We can probably help him grow. So we decided to accept that one as well and sign on the dotted line. So Berahino and Jamie Vardy both joining up with the first team squad so definitely definitely no more more strikers needed Fraser Campbell of course has gone the other way joining West Brom um, but that leaves us with not a great deal of money to be honest um, another position that we we were interested in earlier on in the season in getting cover was that left back role of course we still haven't done that um, Joe Gomez the 18 year old from Liverpool is is listed for loan um, so we're going to put an offer in for him with a 20% uh, clean sheet bonus. And obviously Southampton's promising left back Matt Target, who has played in the Premier League a few times um, and looked very solid. So he's another one on our radar. We put the bids in for, for both of them um, in the hope that at least one of them would be accepted. Um, and that would give us cover for the, the entire season. Um, as you can see, they were both accepted. So again, we had a decision to make. This time we're not going to bring in both of them. Um, we are just going to bring in one. And we decided that the, the one probably with the most potential is Joe Gomez from Liverpool. He's been solid um, playing for them in real life, got decent experience. And at the age of just 18, he's got a lot of potential as well. So he joins the club and that is pretty much it. We are, we are happy with the squad we've managed to put together over the summer and uh, with the deals that we've done on this deadline day. So we're just going to progress through right up to the deadline. Um, and we're really, really pleased. Hopefully 
we can start to grab some more goals in these performances. As I said, we have been performing very well. We haven't lost many games at all. Um, the real, real slip up to Aston Villa. That is still bugging me, to be honest, because that three points that we should have got from that game, playing against 10 men for 75 minutes, would really put us right up there. But as you can see, a real, real tough game. We've just been away to the champions, and now we, we host Manchester City, probably the favourites for the title this year. Let's have a look at the side then. Um, both Jamie Vardy and Berahino are going to start on the bench. Um, for this one. I didn't want to chuck them both straight into the team. Obviously Dwight Gale picked up a goal at Stamford Bridge so no need to drop him and the rest of the team is pretty much as standard but looking at this City team probably the main surprise is that Joe Hart is left out of the starting 11. He's going to have to settle for a place on the bench as is Fernandinho um, but it's still such a, a frightening squad. You've got Aguero and Wilfred Bonny both playing against you so you've got pace and strength um, so a lot to defend against but we start very positively. Dwight Gale puts the ball across goal and Sinkaravan couldn't quite get the contact needed to force it past the goalkeeper and still quarter of an hour gone we're going to continue to put pressure on City. James McArthur does really well here, finds Sinkaravan but his effort was straight at Willy Caballero and he just gobbles it up, not a problem but Aguero was a really isolated figure, he did get the chance to come forward but we defended really well as you can see three on one and we just kind of box him out but he goes round everybody, um, a back heel into the box but luckily Kabai putting the work in in midfield. Um, it helps to snuff out the danger. So not the most entertaining of first halves. Um, the score is nil-nil, so uh, anybody's game. Really, really even. We probably had the uh, the better of the chances, but City come out really, really brightly for the second half. You can see Jesus Navas getting the ball on the right-hand side. He feeds it inside to Wilfred Bonny. Could have squared it, but he decided to go for goal. Um, and a really, really disappointing finish. Fortunately for us, he just hit the side, net him. But as you can see on the hour mark now, we have a chance to go forward. Dwight Gale. Wins possession. He was very fortunate to get that chance, but Willy Caballero denied him. You would hope Gale, he's a couple of one-on-ones he's missed this season. Hopefully we can work on his finishing and get that improved. But Wilfred Bonney has a, a really powerful effort here from 25 yards out. It's well saved from McCarthy, who parried it out of danger. And with just over 20 minutes remaining, we decide to make a change. It's Sadio Berahino who's going to come on for his debut. Hopefully he can uh, perform some heroics and grab the goal that we need. He's very quick, so his fresh legs should create some opportunities and he picks up the ball here it's his first real involvement skins Vincent company with ease and he is away he's certainly got the pace but you can see company is tracking back he is getting there um, the finish from Berahino though was absolutely poor he could have snatched all three points for us there um, a real real chance for especially for a striker of his caliber whether you put it down to debut nerves I don't know but Gale and Berahino both not finishing as we need them to do so but just two minutes left now a goal for either side would win it um, you can see City playing some really good football. Watamendi stands the ball up. Luckily for us, McCarthy is kept, has kept his concentration and manages to punch the ball clear. But deep into stoppage time, we're going to have one more opportunity as punch and slips the ball through. It's Berahino with his second one-on-one -on -one of the game. He's being closed down, but again, the finish is not up to scratch and the game ends nil-nil, which you can't really complain when you get a draw against a team as good as Manchester City. But when you've had some clear-cut chances like we did, you really feel that you should get all three points but time to put that behind us now we face a trip to uh, Vicarage Road to take on Watford um, one of the other uh, newly promoted sides in this division you can have a look at their team now you may remember especially Spurs fans of Aurelio Gomez in goal he's a, a very established keeper you've got Barami as well and Diamante up front so plenty of people that can cause us a few problems and players that have got Premier League experience this time you can see it's Jamie Vardy who leads the line up front, especially uh, after Berahino's poor finishing in that last game. It's good that he was making the runs and creating the opportunities, but we really do need goals. And we um, we had a first opportunity really, half hour in, Jamie Vardy picking up space well in the box. He tried to, to smash the ball low and hard across goal, but it went out for a corner. But from the resulting corner, we played it short. Here's Sinkraven, picks out Wilfred Zaha on the edge of the box. Um, really, really struggled to find space in this first half. Um, the ball is blocked by Ababo and picked up by Gomez easily. Again, it was a very, very tight first half. Very even, very compact. Diamante with the chance here for Watford, but luckily Kurt Zuma does what he does best and just knocks his opponent out the way of the ball using his strength. But Jamie Vardy was very lively using his pace. He tried to tee up Jason Punchin on the left-hand side here, I think it was, um, when he may have gone for goal himself. Very unselfish play. Probably the wrong decision. We should have just got the shot off on goal but we move into the second half now an hour played um, and still no real clear-cut chances for either side and Diamante here going through probably four five six defenders 
Um, but luckily, in the end, Joel Ward managed to uh, to block the shot. But we come forward at the other end. We brought Berahino on at half time, and he was very nearly gifted uh, an opportunity there. And he put the defence under pressure and forced them to smash the ball out for a corner. Um, just 20 minutes remaining, so you can see there hasn't been a lot of chances. But Kurt Zuma gets his head to that one, um, but could only head it over the crossbar. So we move into the last 15 minutes. We're now playing a 4 2 2 2 formation, a 4 2 2 2 formation. Um, in the hope to get this winner. And Wilfred Sahar going on a really amazing run here. The ball falls to Jason Punch. And first effort was saved by Gomez, but the rebound somehow from the uh, the tightest of angles, he manages to squeeze into the back of the net. We're going to have a look at the slow motion replay to see just how he's done that. And it actually goes through the legs of the, the Watford keeper as he's getting up after making that first save. But once we, uh, we took the lead, we started to play with a lot more confidence and managed to control the game a bit better. You can see Balassi sliding the ball through to Zaha, beats Gomez again. Um, we thought that had hit the back of the net, but again, poor finishing. Um, hopefully, in this game, it won't cost us. We move into stoppage time here. Probably one last attack for Watford. It's Watson who has the effort from distance, and he knows that is probably the last opportunity for his side to get anything from this game, and it did prove to be the case. And those travelling Palace fans are absolutely delighted that we've managed to, uh, to pick up um, another three points on the road. We've really got a good away record this year. You can see it ending 1-0. Thanks to that scrappy goal from Jason Punchin. But we're going to end this uh, this episode in the usual way with a look at the Barclays Premier League table. Now, we are in eighth place. A lot of the teams, though, have played seven games. We've only played six, so gaming hands on a few of them. And if we win it, we can, uh, we can get up to 14 points, which would put us second level on points with Bournemouth, of all teams, up there at the top end of the table. It is Everton who are, who are leading the way at the moment, followed by Bournemouth and Arsenal, both on 14 points. Southampton in fourth. Spurs are fifth, Chelsea and Man United are above us in sixth and seventh respectively. But um, we are performing really, really well. Three wins, two draws and one defeat um, from our opening six games. Of course, it is on legendary, so it is increasingly difficult this season. So we're very, very pleased with the start that we've made. And hopefully with the, uh, the transfers and the additions to the squad that we have made, um, we will go on this season. We've got good squad depth, um, cover in all positions now. So um, hopefully with the togetherness and the team morale, we can really, really push on. And you can see here at the bottom end of the table, it's a real surprise to see teams like Stoke and Liverpool down at the bottom there. But that's where we're going to bring this one to a close, guys. Make sure you follow me on social media. All of the links are in the description. Drop a like to the video and subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you again next time.